This is a coin cell battery, much of the type that powers many of your household appliances. Now, the fundamentals of this chemistry are fairly well known, but if you want to squeeze every last little bit of performance from this battery, the devil is in the chemical details. Now, how do we find out about these details? That's where this big guy comes in. This is an NMR magnet. And if we were to put this coin cell in the magnet and found a way to apply an oscillating radio frequency magnetic field to the material inside the coin cell, the atomic nuclei inside would just sing about their chemical environments, information we really, really want to know if we're optimizing performance. Problem, the metal casings of the cell. Metal casings are well known to block oscillating radio frequency magnetic fields. So for a long time, it was thought that NMR of coin cells would be an extraordinarily difficult task. So how do we do this? Well, that's where this guy comes in. This is our NMR probe designed to deliver oscillating magnetic fields to the inside of the coin cell. I so happen to have a coin cell already loaded in the coil. This coil produces an oscillating radio frequency magnetic field. And what we found is that if you lay the coin cell in to the coil just right, oscillating magnetic fields are actually able to squeeze through the polymer gap between the two metal casing. And as a result, the NMR experiment works and we get the chemical information we wish to see. So we have loaded a coin cell into the NMR probe and we are currently running an NMR experiment on the coin cell. The probe base is right here. It's been, the probe has been inserted into the bore of, into a very large superconducting magnet, which provides the static magnetic field for the experiment. This black cable uh, is a connection to the NMR spectrometer, which provides the pulses that stimulate the nuclei in the coin cell, as well as records signals coming off of the coin cell for detection. Finally, I'd like to point out that this uh, white cable right here contains direct current leads which connect to the battery and go over to a potentiostat. And at the potentiostat, we're able to drive the coin cell using whichever electrochemical experiment we wish to perform. Because conventional wisdom said that oscillating magnetic fields cannot be delivered to the inside of the battery on account of metal casings, researchers had developed this paradigm where the battery was adapted for the NMR probes that were available. And so th this involved uh, creating custom cells that used very thin wires to deliver the current, things like plastic casings, and it changed the internal constituency of the battery cell so that it was really a question of whether or not the chemistry and the details that were being observed actually carried over to a real functional cell. The first time I began working with this probe, I had loaded a test cell into the probe and when I started seeing the NMR signals that were coming through, I thought something must be wrong. These signals have to be artifacts. These are way too clean, way too strong for this to actually be relaying information about the chemical environments. But it didn't take long to realize that sure enough, the signals that we were measuring actually corresponded to the lithium environments we expected in the test cell. So everybody is interested in batteries that last longer, deliver more power, and are all around cooler. And that really is just the fundamental driving force for this work. We are using this technology to study cutting edge, next generation battery chemistries that will be used in grid storage and electric vehicles.